A reading from the book of Revelation. I, John, your brother, who share with you the distress, the kingdom, and the endurance we have in Jesus, found myself on the island called Patmos, because I proclaimed God's word and gave testimony to Jesus. I was caught up in spirit on the Lord's day, and heard behind me a voice as loud as a trumpet, which said, Write on a scroll what you see. Then I turned to see whose voice it was that spoke to me, and when I turned, I saw seven gold lampstands, and in the midst of the lampstands one like a son of man, wearing an ankle-length robe with a gold sash around his chest. When I caught sight of him, I fell down at his feet, as though dead. He touched me with his right hand and said, Do not be afraid. I am the first and the last, the one who lives. Once I was dead, but now I am alive forever and ever. I hold the keys to death and the netherworld. Write down, therefore, what you have seen, and what is happening and what will happen afterwards. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Well, in the liturgical calendar, we're at the, the end of the Easter octave, and this day is typically called Divine Mercy Sunday. And since it's Divine Mercy Sunday, I wanted to remind all of you that Jesus should scare the hell out of you. <laughs> um, I had a student who would say that when I worked at Loyola, and he meant it in a playful way, that the evil should be removed from you. Literally, Jesus should scare the hell out of you. But if you've been paying attention the last week and a half, as we went through the Triduum and then the Octave, a lot of these stories, a lot of these moments that, we, that are crystallized, that we hold up, that we pray to, are terrifying. They're really, really scary moments. Last Friday, Simon Felix preached on the Passion, and he showed us just how excruciating, how painful, and how scary that must have been. Not only for Jesus himself, but for the onlookers, for everyone involved, even the persecutors must have been afraid. It's a very scary image. Our Gospel today Jesus is resurrected, which we hold up as the joy of our faith, and we should. But I can understand why the apostles were terrified. Kevin showed us earlier this week that one time when he appears through unlocked doors, he rebukes everyone, so that was a delight. But also, he's popping through unlocked doors. That alone is a little scary. And then he comes back, and by some... What feels like a cruel twist, God has raised him up from the dead, but he sends him back still wounded, with the hole still in his hands and the hole in his side. And I can imagine that if I was in that room and I saw Thomas put his hands through the holes, I wouldn't be like, that's amazing. I would be trembling in fear. I wouldn't be like, oh, yes. Like, oh, God. <laughs> and then... Today's reading that I just shared with you, John, who traditionally we can say was at those events, who's already seen Jesus do some pretty spectacular stuff, who's already probably been scared a lot, sees one like a son of man, and uh, for some reason we cut out some of the juicy bits here in Revelation where his eyes are fire and his feet are brass. I mean, it's a, it's a much scarier image. We kind of roll it back, make, a, make Jesus a bit more timid here. Uh, John is scared enough he falls down as though dead. He falls down as though dead. And then Jesus says, do not be afraid. I find it a little humorous that every time in Scripture that someone says, do not be afraid, there's normally really good reason. <laughs> normally there's a great reason to be afraid. I think most theophanies are probably, at the beginning at least, quite terrifying. But I think in all three of these images, the real scary part is not the image. 
It's what each of these images calls us to do. And we want to cling to our earthly life. We want to cling to those things that would draw us to the evil one, to hell. We desire that for some reason. And so in the first image of the cross, our foundation, our truth, in that first image of the cross, yes, the image is terrifying. But what becomes scary for us as Christians is that our story is no longer ours. We have to give up our pain. We have to give up our narrative. And we have to fold it into the meaning of Christ. We have to fold it into the meaning of the resurrected God. And it's scary. It's scary to give up that bit of ourselves. We want to cling to it. But Jesus wants to make us new. And we know that being made new is almost never pleasant. But it's an incredible act of divine mercy. In that second image, where Thomas literally puts his hands in the holes and in the side, I think Jesus is showing us another example of something that will scare most of us. See, I think Jesus comes back wounded to show us that even when we're resurrected, even when we're redeemed, the scars of our past will still be used for the glory of God. But preaching out of your vulnerability, preaching out of your brokenness, preaching a message of compassion where you truly suffer with, that's really scary. It's not fun to tell people that, yeah, I've been there. I know what that sin is. I know how it is to be that broken. But yet, it is an act of divine mercy to preach in such a way, to live in such a way, to let God redeem your past and use even your sins for His glory. And in this last one, when we see Jesus, the cosmic Christ, terrifying, eyes ablaze, <laughs> golden feet, brass feet, the whole thing. That image of Christ as King of the universe can be terrifying. It can help us see in a negative way our own smallness. Why would God even care? Why would anyone care? And yet, the beauty of this passage is that John, who's been through so much, John, who has been through hell and high water, is still having visions of a Christ who reminds him that he is the first and the last, that he has conquered death, that any fear that he has is minuscule. And that not only that, he wants to have an intimate relationship with him. He wants to love him. He wants to be present with him. That this Jesus, who was crucified, resurrected, and then crowned as the king of the universe, the very same one, wants to know you. And that's an incredible act of divine mercy. It's an incredible act of divine mercy. And so with each of these, I think as we reflect on them and look at them, yes, they're scary. And yes, there are moments in the Christian life where we are asked to give something up, to change something, to be new. And all of those can be scary. But it's a divine act of mercy to let Jesus scare the hell out of you and to in turn scare the hell out of others. Yeah.